We're using techniques that I learned working at Michelin star restaurants so you can elevate your Thanksgiving dinner. We will have a super juicy bird with a flavorful stuffing, serve it with some amazing sides, and finish it off with an incredible gravy. The full recipe and the Thanksgiving game plan is linked in the description. Start by letting your turkey dry on a tray to remove as much water as possible. It will make less of a mess. Run your knife down both sides of the wishbone and wiggle it out. This will make breaking down the bird easier. I don't know if it's just me, but I can never move a wishbone without breaking it. Cut off the wings, leaving the drumettes attached to the turkey. Break the turkey's arms. Okay, that sounds kind of brutal, but it'll make cutting between the bones easier. Flip the bird over and remove the Pope's nose. This is one of my favorite parts to eat, but we'll be saving this to render later. Wiggle the legs and the drumettes to find the joint. Make a line from the wing joint to the leg joint. Release the turkey by cutting through the joints in the arm on both sides, then using your hands, pull the meat down. Once you get to the legs, cut through the leg joints and pull the carcass out. Ideally, you want to cut around the oyster instead of through it like I did. Fully detach the meat from the body and save the bones off to the side. I must say this technique is a lot easier on a chicken. Gently remove the legs from the skin and set the legs off to the side. Remove the skin from the breast, being careful not to tear it, and pull the skin over the drumettes, storing the skin off to the side. Cut the cartilage out from between the breast, and after that, remove the drumettes and trim away any bones or cartilage. For the legs, there's a seam of fat. Cut closer to the drumstick and you will cut right through the joint. Save the drumsticks off to the side. Flip over the thigh and remove the bone by cutting through both sides of the thigh bone. Slip your knife under the bone and release it from the meat. Cut around the knee joint and release it, and remove all cartilage and bones. Break the joint in the wings and separate into pieces. Using your finger, loosen the tenders. After, you are able to pull them right off. Break down the carcass by removing the rib cage and cut it into smaller pieces. Remove the skin from the back of the bird. The less skin you put in the stock, the less fat you'll have to skim off. Flip the back over and using a knife or your finger, break apart the organs in the back and rinse them away. Split the back in half and set aside. Lay the bones out on a tray with a rack and roast at 425 degrees Fahrenheit, 218 degrees Celsius. Now pardon me while I disinfect my whole kitchen. Roast the bones until they are GBD, golden brown and delicious, for around 45 minutes. Be sure to flip the bones halfway to brown them evenly. Place all the bones into a pot. I had to use two. Add water to the sheet trays with the racks flipped upside down and place them back in the oven for five minutes. Use a wooden spoon to release all the fond on the tray and add it to the stock. This will not only add a ton of flavor to your stock, but it makes cleaning the trays a lot easier. Just barely cover the bones with cold water and bring up to a simmer on high heat. Once you see bubbles coming up, pull the pot halfway off the heat to create a convection simmer. This will force all the fat and impurities up and push them off to the side, preventing them from emulsifying in, which would create a cloudy stock. Using a spoon and a bowl of water, skim off all of the fat and impurities with a spoon and into the bowl, dipping into the water each time so that you don't reintroduce the impurities back into the stock. Place the pot back fully on the burner and turn down the heat to just a simmer and cook for 3 hours. For the vegetables, peel and cut 200 grams of carrot along with 200 grams of celery and 400 grams of yellow onion. Add this to the stock and simmer for another 45 minutes. Turn off the heat on the stock and add in thyme, bay leaves, peppercorns, and parsley stems. I don't use a lot of parsley, but when I do, I save the stems in the freezer for making stock. Let this sit for 15 minutes, then strain. I like to use a colander placed over a large bowl, then double strain the stock to remove all the small bits. To render the turkey fat, place all the pieces of fat, including the Pope's nose and extra skin, into a pot. Give it a good rinse, then fill it up with cold water and place it on a burner to bring to a simmer. Use a spoon and a bowl of water to remove all of the impurities that flow to the surface. 
and let this simmer for 40 minutes. Strain this into a wide pan, being sure to squeeze out as much of the fat as possible. Cook out all the water, and once the fat is fully clear, strain this off again and store off to the side. To make the turkey confit, mix together 45 grams of salt with 15 grams of sugar. Mix this together, then sprinkle it over the turkey thighs. Place some of the cure into the bottom of the container and add four sprigs of thyme and two bay leaves. Top this with the turkey thighs and cure in the fridge for 12 to 24 hours. Rinse the cure off from the turkey legs and place the thighs into a pan, preferably in a single layer. Cover in the turkey fat and if you don't have enough fat to cover, you can add some neutral flavor vegetable oil or ideally buy some rendered duck fat. Place this into a 270 degrees Fahrenheit, 132 degrees Celsius oven and cook until tender, about one hour. Remove the thighs from the fat and while still warm, shred the meat with two forks. Save the confit and the fat off to the side. For the stuffing, cube 160 grams of brioche, then place it onto a lined sheet tray and into a cool oven to dry overnight. Cut up half a pound of mushrooms. I'm using king oyster. To a pan, add some of the reserved turkey fat along with the mushrooms. Season with salt and place on a lid to help bring out the water in the mushrooms. Remove the lid and cook until they are GBD, golden brown and delicious. Mince up one whole shallot along with one clove of garlic. Then slice 125 grams of leek in half moons using only the white and light green parts, which is about one leek's worth. Add the shallot, garlic, and leek to the mushrooms and cook on low heat to sweat them. Into a bowl, add half a cup of turkey stock with one whole egg and whisk. Add in the dry brioche, mixing with a spatula until the bread soaks up all the stock. Add in the mushroom mixture, four sprigs of picked thyme leaves, one shredded turkey leg, and four ounces of shredded Gruyere cheese and mix together. Allow this to sit in the fridge to let all the flavors commingle for one hour. For the turkey, butterfly the breast. Well, this is more of a maimed butterfly. If I were to do this recipe over, I would have actually butterflied the breast. Remove the tendon from the tenders by running your knife down the tendon to remove. Place all the turkey into a container and season all the sides with salt. Wipe down the counter with a wet paper towel and lay down some plastic wrap and place down one breast and one tender. Cover with a sheet of plastic wrap and pound the turkey until it is as even as possible. Use a bowl scraper to shape the turkey into a rectangle and place the stuffing down in the middle. Use your hands to shape the stuffing into a log, making sure that this is nice and compact. Tie off one end of the log, re-roll, and tie the other end as tight as possible. Store the turkey in the fridge for three hours. Lay out the turkey skin and remove any pockets of fat by either pulling them off with your fingers or carefully scraping it with a knife. The fat can be used to render. Cut the skin down the middle to have two even pieces. Lay one of the skins out as flat as possible and lay your unwrapped turkey log down. Tightly wrap the skin around and trim any excess. Tie a loop around the end of the turkey and continue to loop the string around the turkey to give it shape. Flip the bird around and loop the string around the other side to tighten everything up. As you go, tuck the skin in to patch any holes. Tie the end of the string to the beginning and trim off any excess. Place the turkey onto a sheet tray with a rack and into the fridge to dry the skin out for 24 hours. For the cranberries, squeeze 260 milliliters of orange juice and use the strainer to catch any seeds. If you are anti-unitasker like I am, use a pair of tongs to squeeze out the last drops of the orange juice. I squeezed 5 oranges in total. To a pot, add 12 ounces of fresh cranberries, being sure to pick out any soft cranberries or twigs, along with 300 grams of sugar, 260 grams of orange juice, 260 grams of sparkling wine, and bring to a simmer. Tie half a stick of cinnamon to the handle for easy extraction. 
Cook the cranberries down until they become nice and thick. The thicker, the better. Remove the cinnamon stick and place the cranberries into a food processor or blender. With the food processor running, add in one ounce of cold cubed butter. Adding fats to purees will make them smoother. Once it is nice and smooth, pass the puree through a strainer to remove all the seeds and store in the fridge. For the sweet potato puree, remove the ends from three sweet potatoes. Using a fork, poke holes all around the sweet potatoes. Lay down a piece of foil and place down the sweet potatoes with one ounce of butter, salt, and two sprigs of thyme. Tightly wrap up the sweet potatoes, then place them into a 350 degrees Fahrenheit, 176 degrees Celsius oven until tender, about 80 minutes. The best way to check is with a cake tester or a paring knife. It should be extremely tender. While the sweet potatoes are still hot, cut them in half and peel away the skins which should easily come off. Using a strainer, pass the sweet potatoes into a pot. To a pan, add four ounces of butter and brown. Once it is nice and browned, add it into a bowl to prevent it from burning. To the sweet potatoes, add in the brown butter with two ounces of cream and 60 grams of maple syrup. Heat this up and season with salt and pepper. For the Brussels sprouts, trim away the end and remove the outside leaves reserving off to the side. Trim up the stems if needed and cut the Brussels sprouts in half. For the outer leaves, cut away any of the white vein and fry at 300 degrees Fahrenheit, 148 degrees Celsius, using a lid to prevent any oil from splashing on you. Fry until all the water is out. The bubbles from the Brussels sprouts will stop. Place this onto a paper towel to remove any excess oil and season with salt while they're still warm. Heat a pan over medium heat and add enough oil to coat the pan. Lay the Brussels sprouts out, cut side down. Then coat the backs with more oil and season with salt. Cook until the Brussels sprouts are GBD, then flip them onto their backs and add some turkey stock and butter to glaze the sprouts. Once they are tender, move from the pan Tighten up the glaze and coat the Brussels sprouts in the glaze and season with more salt. For the gravy, add 2 ounces of rendered turkey fat to a pan with 2 ounces of flour and cook the roux until it's light brown. It should smell like roasted nuts. Add in a quart of cold turkey stock to the roux. Adding cold liquid to a hot roux will help prevent any lumps. Bring this up to a simmer and pull the pan off halfway to create a convection simmer. Using a spoon and a bowl of water, remove any impurities that float to the surface. Reduce the sauce to nappe, which means to coat the back of a spoon. Turn off the heat and add two sprigs of thyme, one smashed garlic clove, and whisk in one ounce of cold butter. Strain the gravy and season the taste with sherry vinegar, white pepper, and salt if needed. To roast the turkey, Brush the skin with some rendered turkey fat and season the outside with salt. Place into a 475 degrees Fahrenheit, 246 degrees Celsius oven and cook until GBD. Pull from the oven once you reach an internal of 150 degrees Fahrenheit, 65 degrees Celsius. When meat is tightly wrapped up like this ballantine, it will easily carry up 10 degrees Fahrenheit. I cooked my turkey for about 40 minutes, flipping halfway and removing the twine to allow the turkey skin to brown evenly. Once this has rested for a minimum of 10 minutes, slice the turkey right before serving. Add some finishing salt to the turkey, then place down on the plate. Pipe the warm sweet potato puree onto the plate with one large circle in the middle and two small ones on the sides. Place down a soft quenelle of the cranberry, add five roasted Brussels sprouts, Garnish with crispy Brussels sprouts and pour the gravy into the middle. This cranberry sauce is probably the best I've had. This turkey is juicy with amazing stuffing in the middle. Gravy is so flavorful and all the sides, they're just Thanksgiving flavors. And if this plating is not enough food, you can easily double everything. You can add more turkey, more sides. I just did a small plating because that's what I wanted to eat. If you enjoyed this video, you gotta watch this video next. Thank you.